Coming to you direct from Silencer Shop Studios, home of the glass case of emotion. Silencershop.com, the easiest way to buy silencers online, period. Stand by for education, enlightenment, enjoyment, and entertainment. He's not here to talk about your feelings. He's not here to say what you want to hear. He's here to say what needs to be said. Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, please welcome your host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Hello and welcome back to Student of the Gun Radio. Thank you for joining us yet again. We truly appreciate it. Wherever you happen to be on planet Earth, we appreciate you joining us today. 24-7, online, streaming, directly. What time does your show come on? What time is it now on planet Earth? Because that's when our show is on. Thanks to the miracle of modern technology. And... uh, in the studio with me, on the other side, on the outside of the glass case of emotion, is Jared. He's got his glasses on, looking very uh, studious. I see you got your new glasses. Did you get them right before you went on your little vacation? Yeah, I got them right before that. Apparently, I broke the frames. Why did you do that? Because they naturally fell off my face, but I couldn't tell them that that was a natural cause, so they wouldn't replace it with the guarantee, so I actually had to pay for new frames, which was ridiculous, because... Mm. They naturally fell off my face. That's right. Gravity. You can't stop gravity from pulling your glasses is, off your it's face. It's a natural and thing. Making them fall to the ground. Yeah. Oh, man. Do you know what I... Uh, so, I went so? with Alex's mother, Lisa, and her boyfriend, and Alex and I. We went to this new place in Ocean Springs on Sunday. And it ended up that a bartender that we know works at this new place. And his name is Russell. He's actually... He's a bartender here on the coast that actually has his own like fan base. It's kind of cool. People will just follow him to the whatever restaurant he works at because he's a good bartender. So he came out and he saw me. He's like, oh, you look like, like Clark Kent. And he's like, you know what they call me, right? I was like, what? He's like, they call me Dark Kent because he's black. Oh and I was God. like, oh. Dark Kent. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Speaking of dark chocolate, uh, whatever happened to uh, our other favorite bald bartender, who's also a, a physical fitness instructor? I haven't seen him or heard from him. Latroy, lately. yeah. Troy. Whatever, whatever happened to Latroy? Oh, he kind of these bartenders—they just kind of move around. There's a lot of work on the Gulf Coast for bartenders, so yeah, yeah. I was, I was going to say something, and I totally forgot what I was going to say. Did Dark now. can't throw you off? Yeah, it totally threw me off. It totally threw me off. Oh, Ocean Springs. That's what it was. You mentioned Ocean Springs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How you like that? How you like me now? Oh, for those of you who are, who are fans of the band Saliva, uh, all of you rockers out there, they're going to be here on the Gulf Coast this coming weekend. And uh, who has tickets? This guy. Two thumbs and tickets to see Saliva. That would be this guy. And... Uh, it's going to be at a venue in Ocean Springs, which is crazy. I, I I had to look twice, but apparently it's true because I've got the tickets. I went on and I, I they took my money and gave me tickets, so it has to be happening, right? Yep. All right. And that's a uh, that's this coming Sunday. I'm looking forward to that. It's pretty cool. Zach Zach was totally jazzed. I said, Zach, I walked out into the kitchen where he was he was farting around in the kitchen, and I said, Do you like saliva? And he's like, Yeah. I said, You want to go see him next week? He's like, Yeah. I said, well, let me call your brother and see if he wants to go. Maybe you should call Jaeger before we go. Yeah, I, that's what I was going to say. I need to call James and say, do you know anybody in Saliva? Or maybe I should call Matt. Uh, yeah, well, how cool is that, that, uh, that uh, Pop Evil was at the Mansfield Reformatory this weekend? Yeah, I hope some of you guys from Ohio got to go see him. What's up, Ohio hippies? Yeah, uh, it w- and it was neat as he sent me a text and he said, yeah, we're playing uh, at this old prison in Ohio. And I was like, yeah, I know exactly where you are. You're at the Mansfield Reformatory. I didn't know that they did concerts there. Well, they, they do lots of They rent it out to, to Hollywood. They, they lease it to Hollywood and to movie makers. And they do the big Halloween thing there every year. I was talking, I was joking with your mom about that, about how, how she uh, snuck Paxton, you in, in Paxton. And, and who, who else went with you? It was, you? It was Hannah. And who? My Hannah? friend Hannah, yeah. Oh, you're in Hannah. Okay. Because... Uh, Paxton wasn't old enough. He had to be 16 to get in, and she was only like 12 or 13. So you guys faked it, like made her look taller. <laughs> and she was scared. 
Yeah. And, and you were, were you stomping at the, at the bad guys, at the villains? Were you, were you stomping and, and lunging at them? I don't know what your I Your mom doing. said that you, you stomped your foot and lunged at them when they came out. Oh. Because you're that kind of a man. Apparently, that's what I did. <laughs> anyway, for those of you, uh, uh, you cinephiles, the Mansfield Reformatory is a, I don't know, 100-plus-year-old prison. It's a big, old, stone-block prison. And that is where they filmed the Shawshank Redemption. And that's the most famous one, but something that you guys might not know and all of you guys that are long in the tooth like me remember a movie with Kurt Russell and Sylvester, Sylvester Stallone called Tango and Cash. It was one of those just ridiculous 80s cop buddy movies. And uh, Tango and Cash ended up getting falsely accused of committing crimes. And they were incarcerated and they had to escape uh, to clear their good names in the if you watch that movie and you see the big prison escape scene where they, they get out and it's raining and, and so forth, that is the Mansfield Reformatory right there. So a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, trivia for you kids out there in the in the home audience. I hope you appreciate it. I'm wearing my crossbreed holster right now because that's the kind of guy I am. I'm wearing the uh, the Super Tuck Deluxe and I've got inside my Super Tuck Deluxe, I've got my TP9 SA. That's right. Me too. You got your TP9. Mine's brown, though. Yeah, you got Mine your, isn't all your cool desert looking. tan one, and I've got my I've got my one that is uh, Duracoated. But if you'd like to carry a gun or attach a gun to anything, your body included, you can go to CrossbreedHolsters.com and check those guys out. Now, when you if you've got a gun and you want to keep it from rusting, a number one, you should do maintenance on your guns once in a while. You're like, what? But I bought a Glock, and it says that they're self cleaning. I just put it in the dishwasher. A don't put your Glock in the dishwasher. And B, every once in a while, you need to disassemble it and clean out the dust and dirt and carbon and so forth. And the best way to do that is the Frog Lube. Go to froglube.com and uh, get everything that you need to clean your guns and lubricate them. All right, kids, it is Wednesday, and that means it's our time for our SWAT Fuel Fitness Talk. And um, I wow, I, I see you just dropped that in there. I didn't even know what you were going to talk about today, but... Go ahead and do it. First, before I talk about anything, I want to talk about SWAT Fuel. Go to SWATFuelStore.com. And I think I keep forgetting to remind you guys about the code. So use SOTG2015 to save yourself some money. Now, if you're a member of the grad program, you can actually pay for your grad program membership with the money that you save by using the code that you can get on the partner discounts page at StudentOfTheGunRadio.com. I was having a conversation recently with a couple of kids that were younger than me, and it's weird for me to be able to call somebody else kids. And that is weird. Yeah, it, it's kind of weird. But the conversation, we were talking about fitness at first, and they're like, and I was asking them, why don't you do this? Uh, change this up because it'll give you results. And they're like, oh, well, that's, that's hard to do. And then it, it drug on into just everyday life and why their life is going the way it's going and what they can do to change it. And the changes that they need to make are hard. And they're like, oh, it's hard, so... That's why we haven't done it. And my, what I said to them was part of life is overcoming adversity. And the younger generation, like the generation after mine, they went through high school, they graduated high school, and they're in their early 20s now. That's not really the generation after yours, but go ahead. Well, whatever. <laughs> I consider it the generation after mine because in my head, I am a little bit older than 26 but they didn't even know what the word adversity meant. And so I just pulled up Google and wow. I said, here you go. Here's a loose definition. If you want an actual definition, go to Merriam-Webster. But so part of life is overcoming adversity. Adversity, what, what's the term? Or the, the quote, adversity breeds camaraderie. Yes. Uh, it, it makes you better, stronger, and a more confident person. Yes, doing something hard, overcoming that, challenge mentally and physically gives you confidence in yourself you know where adversity breeds camaraderie came from you 
Yeah, the person you're looking at. Did it really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. It was when I was uh, teaching the military. It's stuff, it's like stuff that I've heard my entire life because you're my father. I just assumed that it... it well, I, I don't know. Out. Maybe somebody said it before me, but that's what I used to say. That's one of the phrases that I used to use when I was teaching the military kids. Yeah. Well, I probably heard it from you. Obviously, I heard it from you. And my thing with, okay, part of life is overcoming adversity, doing something challenging to not only further your life, further what you want, but also leaving something behind that's going to better future generations. And when you leave this earth, the only influence you have is what you leave behind. Mm -hmm. After you're gone, after you leave, that it shouldn't be when your influence stops. Dude, you need to read Brave New World. Really? Yeah. Are, are you? Are, what, are, what are you reading right now? The Total Resistance. Total Resistance. Yeah. But. It's completely not on this topic at all. But yeah. yeah, Brave New World. I just put that in the recommended reading list. For those of you guys that uh, go to studentofthegun.com, you can get to the Patriot Bookshelf, and that's on there now if you want to go get it. Well, the reason I mention that is because in Brave New World – what you're talking about here, about how the generation, the, your generation, and essentially, I'm sad to tell you, but these people that you refer to as kids that are 19, 20 yeah, years old, I know. those are your generation. Yeah, I know. It's sad. Um, in Brave New World, nothing is hard. There's no adversity. They, they set the world up to make sure that no one is ever uncomfortable, you know, physically or emotionally. Everything is based upon... How can you be comfort? You ever heard anybody say something like comfort, comfort uber, uber alles? alles? Yeah. yeah. Brave New World, their society set up to be comfort uber alles. And that discomfort is viewed as bad. If you are ever physically or mentally uncomfortable or sore or, you know, sad or, or whatever, if you don't have what you need or what you want immediately, then something's wrong. There's something bad and we need to take steps to make that not that is exactly the world that your generation is living in right now yeah that is why when you say to someone well you need it well that's hard yeah well no kidding yeah yeah how do you build muscles you don't build muscles by laying around sitting around being comfortable you cannot build muscles you cannot increase your brain capacity you cannot increase your knowledge by sitting around being comfortable, but they expect it. They expect everything is just going to, and the, the generation you're just talking about, the reason that they can't get results is because the moment that they reach the point where they become uncomfortable, now they'll dress up yeah, like the people across, they'll dress up and they'll wear the little shorts and the little t-shirts and they'll go to the, they'll go to the store and they'll buy the Nikes or the Air Jordans or whatever you wear. I don't know. Uh, they'll buy that stuff. And they'll, they'll dress the part and they'll go participate in whatever because they think that's what you're supposed to do. But the moment they reach the level of discomfort, they stop. They yeah. pull back. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm hot and, and this hurts and it's making me sore. I, I, that's, that's something must be wrong. I need to go to the doctors to, 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 <laughs> for the, the, and that wasn't even what you're going to say right now. That's not the, even the kid that I was talking to. Yeah, well, I hope you weren't even talking to that person. But no. uh, I have to go to the doctors to have them tell me what this pain in my chest is because I think I tore some muscles. No, you're sore from having actually exercised. That's muscle soreness. Yeah. When you experience muscle soreness for the first time and think you need to go to the doctor, Woo! <laughs> and that's another benefit of pushing yourself when you work out is you know your body. You get to know your body and what your limitations are. Instead of going to the doctor because your muscles are sore, you would know <laughs> that your muscles are sore. Yeah, the difference and, between legitimate pain and soreness. And, and the one thing that really it kind of got on my nerves uh, that I'm already having to deal with this <clears throat> is these – these youngins, can I say that? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> These youngins. These millennials. Yeah, they were basically how it, how our conversation got into the day-to-day -day life aspect and off of the fitness aspect was they were saying that, well, you 
do this and you make your own schedule and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, my own schedule was literally 12, 14, 16, 18 hour days for years of my life to get to this point. And it's still like right now at this point in time, it's still tough. There's still a lot of work involved and there's still a lot of stress. And I was like, you guys don't see all the behind the scenes stress that happens because I'm, I don't come to you guys and I don't whine about everything that's hard. Well, exactly. People, you know, I love, I love when people are like, oh, <laughs> I wish I had, you know, my own, or I wish I could do what you do, or I wish, you know, my own job or my own business, or I'm going to start my own company so that I can make my own hours. Yeah. You're going to make your own hours. You're going to make your own hours. Day, all yeah. day. So you like working, you like working eight hours a day with mandatory breaks that, yeah. And then, well, I got on the subject with them. I, I got to the point where I was like, I was thinking of why I do this, why I do what I do. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of a good to have this conversation with them because it made me realize it, it gave me some more clarity. And the reason that I do what I do is because I know that in the future, future generations are going to need the message that we put out here. And so my question to you guys is, are you positively or negatively influencing future generations? I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. What are you doing with your life? Are you just, are you just absorbing? And that's the thing is that everybody like you listening, every single person listening right now has some type of talent that they could share. All you have to do is put in the work to access that talent. Ah, you crazy. Yeah. Put in the work. Who and do refine that? it and then be able to pass it on. All right. Well, let's, uh, speaking of putting in the work, we put in some work to make audio for you guys to listen to. And, and we want you to know and understand where you can go to watch the TV show, to read the books, read the articles. You're listening to the show already. So let's, uh, we'll give you a hand here and let you know. Attention new listeners, we produced a free training video series called 7 Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. We want you to have access to this life-saving information. Get instant access now at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of those questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. All right. And you should do that. You should go to studentofthegun.com. And <laughs> Jared, on, during the mandate video, did you, did you catch me? I was, I was trying to, to keep it short. You know, I didn't, I didn't yeah. want it to be long. I wanted it to, you know, be brief and to the point. And, and I said, I have kids and wives. I yeah, I, know, I, I don't have funny. a, I don't have them. I only have one wife. I'm not Mormon or, <laughs> kids or Hodge. So I, I do only have one wife. So on that topic, I forgot to mention that I may or may not have gotten bored on one of my days off on Sunday. And so I spent about 15 minutes and I made a mandate.us. And you can go look at it. You can get the components that you need to make the mandate. That's right. Mandate.us. Mandate.us. M-A-N-D-A-I-D. US. And uh, you can check that guy, check it out. It's got the video on there for you. I was going to say something. Oh, oh, also, you know what your brother and I have been watching here lately? Uh, we finished Game of Thrones, so we're all done with that. And so we went to Netflix. And if you guys remember, uh, a couple of years ago, it was around Christmas time, two years ago, I guess it was two years ago, they came out with the Marco Polo, the first season of the Netflix original series, Marco Polo. And I remember Second one's out now. Yeah. Well, we, we finished it last night or yesterday or the other day, whatever. But my question is this. Kub, or Genghis Khan was the grandfather of Kublai Khan. And Kublai Khan is the, the main character besides Marco Polo in the show, Marco Polo. But when it comes to ancestry, is Kublai Khan part of the Wu-Tang clan? See that's and I'm I'm trying to figure that out. So if anybody out there knows if if uh, if uh, Kublai Khan was a uh, part of uh, the Wu Tang Clan, uh, write me here at Student of the Gun and let me know. <laughs> uh, you got a gun? You know you you say you don't have a gun, but you want to get one? Okay. 
uh, you can go to brownells.com and you can get everything to go in, on, and around your gun. And even if you don't have one, they have an emergency and survival gear section uh, where you can get food and water and blankets and bandages and all kinds of crazy stuff. So go to brownells.com and check them out. If you got an ugly gun, that is a shame. And I feel bad for you, but you don't have to have an ugly gun. Life's too short to have an ugly gun. And if you've got an ugly gun, you can go to uh, LowerWeaponry.com. Get yourself some Duracoat, and then you won't have an ugly gun anymore. If you're slick, you can go to the Student Gun mobile app that you have on your mobile device. Whatever. That's right. Yep. You can get it from Google Play or on iTunes, and there is a button on there that says Gun Tat. That'll take you directly to the Gun Tat tab or the Gun Tat uh, thing on their website, mm -hmm. but you can get to everything else from there. There you go. There you go. All right. Uh, last week we shared an audio clip with you and uh, I wanted to remind you of exactly what's going on in our nation and who's pulling the strings, who's recruiting and encouraging the monsters, thugs and murderers who are living within our borders. And this is one of the gentlemen uh, who is encouraging monsters, thugs and murderers. His name's Louis Farrakhan, and he represents the nation of Islam. So if the federal government will not intercede in our affairs, then we must rise up and kill those who kill us. Stop them and kill them and let them feel the pain of death that we are seeing. There you go. So uh, Louis Farrakhan, in August of 2015, had that little, uh, that little rally there, that little speech, uh, told his followers, in addition to other things, he was looking for 10,000 uh, soldiers to rise up and kill those. If the federal government does not intercede in our affairs, mm, there, there's so, there is so much wrong with everything he says. Uh, but his wish was for members of the Nation of Islam to rise up and kill. Now, what he was talking about is he was talking about thugs and criminals and inner city scumbags who are in the midst of committing crimes and attacking humans being shot to death by police officers. And uh, that he wants the federal government. We already talked about the uh, remember the pattern and practice behavior of the Department of Justice. Yes, the same U.S. federal government, Department of Justice, that funneled weapons directly into the hands of cartel members, of drug cartel members, and uh, who never prosecuted or imprisoned any of those guys, because that would have been difficult and it would have been hard. Uh, that same... Department of Justice is going to investigate your local police and sheriff's department. So Louie calls for his followers to rise up and kill. Well, he's gotten his wish. That's what's happening in the United States of America. And uh, we've got a story. Uh, this has been linked. It's actually been breaking here as we put the show notes together. Uh, but this one is from dailycaller.com, and it's datelined. Uh, 7 17 2016. This is a story about re by reporter Chuck Ross. Baton Rouge shooter Gavin Eugene Long was Nation of Islam member and railed against crackers on YouTube videos. Oh my goodness. This is my shock face. A YouTube account operated by, oh, and by the way, I went to look at these and, and uh, YouTube has pulled down all of his stuff. Imagine that. Because uh, you can't know. Jared, what would be the benefit of YouTube pulling down and banning or, you know, basically uh, removing all of the videos by Gavin Eugene Long, the man who murdered uh, Baton Rouge police officers this weekend? Mm, to stop his message mm, or from getting out there? Could, question could, mark? It, could it be? They weren't. Now, when he used YouTube to rail against crackers and uh, and. Talk about killing the police. Know what I'm saying? They didn't pull him then. They didn't pull him then when he was making YouTube videos talking about the evils of uh, the white crackers and how they needed to uh, how they needed to be killed. That was a freedom of speech, and they didn't uh, they didn't pull them down then. 
But after he acted out, after he, uh, uh, let's see, let's see some of the stuff that came from uh, this young man's YouTube video. So here's what we know. A YouTube account operated by Gavin Eugene Long was discovered by the Daily Caller revealed key insight into what might have motivated the 29-year-old black man who killed three Baton Rouge police officers Sunday morning. Videos on Long's account show that he was a former Nation of Islam member. He also ranted against, quote, crackers and made references to Alton Sterling, the black man killed by police in Baton Rouge on July 5th. Other information about Long shows that the Kansas City native, who CBS reported was an honorably discharged Marine in 2010, that's just terrible and it sickens me, uh, went by the name of Cosmo Asur Sedapenra, I, I, I don't know, uh, in one video filmed from Houston uh, and posted on Long's YouTube account on July 12th, the suspected gunman discusses being a Marine and reaching the rank of E5. Okay. Long, who is reportedly carrying a rifle and wearing all black attire. Who, who does that in the United States, Jared? Who wears all black with berets and what have you and stands outside a bolt of, of polling places with batons telling people that they better vote the right way? I'm going to go does with that? Uh, Black Panthers. Uh, I, I think it's actually Buddhist monks. No, I think it was a Buddhist monks that do that. Uh, and let's see. He says, he says, if I would have been there with Alton, clap, Long says, um, what would you have done there? Apparently he would have killed crackers. In, he promotes, what does he promote? He promotes the black liberation ideology. He said, I wrote it for my dark-skinned brothers. If you look at the rebels like the Black Panthers, Huey P. Newton, Malcolm X, Elijah Muhammad, they was light-skinned. But we know how hard y'all got it. He knows how hard y'all got it. Know what I'm saying. Now, so here's what we know. We know that Louis Farrakhan, that Louis and the Nation of Islam, is preaching... For his followers to rise up and kill. So my question to you is this. Why is he, why has Louis Farrakhan not been arrested and charged with conspiracy? Mm -hmm. Why is it that uh, when we find out, then these, people's, these people uh, like young know, Mr. Long here, when they act out, their social media accounts are immediately scrubbed. Facebook scrubs them, YouTube scrubs them. They scrub their accounts quickly and immediately. So what? So you won't have access to this? So you won't know? Jared, it's almost like they don't want you to know. Hmm. Sheriff David Clark, who uh, I had the honor of meeting in person at the Concealed Carry Expo in Atlanta a couple of months ago, He's going to be speaking at the Republican Party convention this week, or have already spoke by the time you hear this. I have already spoken by the time you hear this. We've got a clip. Uh, the CNN, one of these, the CNN news weenies, they brought him on to get his thoughts. And I thought, well, I know that everyone in my listening audience needs to hear exactly what he had to say to this CNN news weenie. Perk up your ears, folks. Breaking news tonight. Three officers dead, three wounded That's in Baton the Rouge. Weenie. A really tough day for Baton Rouge and for the country, really. Here to talk about how to keep our police safe is Sheriff David Clark of Milwaukee County, Wisconsin. He is going to be speaking at the Republican convention tomorrow night. Sheriff, thank you uh, very much for that horrific day. I spoke to uh, the heads of the Sheriff Department, the Police Department, and uh, the state police down there, and they told us how their hearts were reeling. Their message is peace and coming together in the country. What's your message? <laughs> you don't believe that for one minute, do you? That their message is? Yeah. Uh, that's what they said to me. Okay. Yeah, I believe them. Of Any protests them over that. the deaths of these cops today in Baton Rouge? I don't know that. I don't know that. Any riots or protests over the uh, uh, police officers in Dallas, Texas? What are you asking? It's a pretty simple question. I asked you if what's your message to the people, their message is one of peace. What is your message? My message has been clear from day one, two years ago. This anti-cop sentiment 
from this hateful ideology called Black Lives Matter has fueled this rage against the American police officer. I predicted this two years ago. So what I what I want to know? know, Okay, sure. Do I want to know? All due respect, do you know that this was because of that? Do we? Yes, I do. As a law enforcement officer, I've been watching this for two years. I predicted this. This anti-police rhetoric sweeping the country has turned out some hateful things inside of people that are now playing themselves out on the American police officer. I want to know, with all of the black-on-black violence in the United States of America, by the way, when the tragedies happened in Louisiana and Minnesota, you know that 21 black people were murdered across the United States? Well, there, well, there was was black, there any reporting there on that? There was a black officer who was killed today. But let, let's, was let's, there any reporting on Sheriff, that? Sheriff, please, let's just, keep, let's just keep the volume down here. So I understand. And, I, and listen, I, I got, dis- I'm I looking don't at disagree. three dead cops uh, this week. Sheriff, and I'm looking at just, five last just, year. Are you trying to tell me to keep it down? Just please. If you will just please, we can keep it civil. So, because we admit the message to people at home, I'm sure you want is one of civility. I wish, Don. I, I, I wish I you like had that have, message of like civility. To have a conversation toward this with you. hateful ideology. These if, purveyors of don't hate. Know what my message is? That's what, what I want they to say do. to you is these we, people let me preach. Get a, are you going to get a word in? Virtue. We'll be right in the back. Name We're going to go to break, hate. and we'll be right back. Are you going to let me talk? We can do that. Back now live with Sheriff David Clark uh, of uh, Milwaukee County, Wisconsin. We're here live in Cleveland. Uh, you're set to speak tomorrow night. And again, all I want to do is have a conversation. I can't have a conversation with you if we're both talking at the same time. What it sounds like to me is that you're accusing me of violence and supporting something, a narrative that I'm not necessarily in support of. And if you're, if that's what you're accusing me of violence, then you can leave. That's not true. I don't support violence of any type against police officers, against anyone. So if you're accusing me of that, then you're welcome to leave. But if you want to have a conversation, I am more than willing to welcome a conversation with you. I don't disagree with you about there is a narrative across the country that could be harming uh, police officers. But we don't know right now as if someone who's in law enforcement, if that was the actual cause of it. Go ahead. Let me ask you this. Do we know that, the, that generally the American law enforcement officers are racist? Do we know this? Go on. I ask a is, question. Is that a, is that a, do I know American general law enforcement are racist? Yeah. I don't think anyone is accusing. If you're, if you're insinuating that people are accusing or saying that law enforcement across this country as a whole are racist, then your assumption is wrong. First what? of all, this whole anti-police rhetoric is based on a lie. There is no data, and you know this, there is no data, there is no research that proves any of that nonsense. None. Even it, you'd have to be more specific about what data and all right. That's that's enough of that. That's enough of that. That Jared. All right. So uh, we we knew you would appreciate that. Uh, Sheriff David Clark just biatch slaps this CNN weenie. See the CNN weenies. They they don't really want to bring you on to get facts or or they don't want to hear what you have to say. That what they do is they bring you on to support what they've already decided. That's why you're there. Uh, and if they think that uh, you're going to say something that contradicts their worldview or their uh, their script, what they'll do is they'll bring on three people that support them and then you. Remember when we did the uh, – I was invited to come on that British uh, TV show to do – to to as the gun guy, Jared, and they had me as the gun guy and a YouTube guy, and then they had four – anti-gun people. Um, so essentially that's how it works. But I wanted you guys to hear that. I wanted you to hear that from uh, Sheriff, Dave, Sheriff David Clark's voice. Now, today we're going to talk about, this is very interesting. I was reading this story. I was reading the, the Demon Sermon and Other Tales, uh, the Demon Sermon on Martial Arts and Other Tales by Isai Chosanchi, translated by William Scott Wilson. Now, listen up. Uh, This section is called The Toad's Way of the Gods. Pay attention. There was a man by the name of Bakosai. Hearing that there was a shrine in some province, he set off for a visit. There he saw a man dressed in dingy outfit prostrated before the front of the shrine, praying for all he was worth, yammering on in a squeaky sort of voice. Then the old ugly man wearing a rumpled light tan robe, oh, then an old ugly man wearing a rumpled 
robe, came out from somewhere behind the shrine and spoke. Whoever you are, with that cunning expression on your face and unnatural look in your eye, when I take a look at you, I see that you are someone with a great desire. You've been praying for something for a long time. The man in the dingy outfit responded by saying, How ashamed I am, and how quickly you have seen through my faults. I am actually a rat advanced in years. Because of my agile nature, it's easy for me to cross over beams and rafters than it is for men to walk on land. Moreover, I have strong teeth. Because of that, there's no place that I can't set my eye on that can eat my, that I can eat my way through, and no place I can't go. Since there's nothing I don't like to eat, there's nothing I don't eat. But even though I have this physical freedom, there's this, this scoundrel called a cat. They keep in they keep in every house, and it's causing me unthinkable harm. My prayer is that th through the might of the gods and Buddhas, that cats of this world be kicked to death all at once. Listen, the cat has no value in this world at all. First of all, it's cruel. It steals fish that may have been placed on dishes. Uh, <laughs> it kills and eats the caged birds that people treasure. It leaves its feces scattered around under the sunken earth and in turn ends, uh, oh, and, and, uh, and in the end turns into a nekomata, that's Japanese mythology, and harms people. So it causes many disasters and has no benefits. My prayer is not a petition of greed. It's a request for the avoidance of physical harm. An old man, no matter who he is, will make temple visits and increasingly pray for all sorts of things. So the toad considers this, and this is what he says to him. He says, a cat causes you injury, so you have good reason to hate it. But take a good look at yourself. A cat is a useless thing in this world, just as you've said. But because it possesses the art of catching you, people forgive it for stealing a little food. And in fact, put food out for it. And it's not that they love cats. It's that they abhor you with a passion. You know that there's nothing valuable about a cat being in the world, but don't know that you're a detriment to society at large. In the minds of men of small caliber, or the minds of men of small caliber are all like this. Now the toad continues and he says, but this does not apply to you. Men who do not uh, men who do not behave themselves prudently, they blame others and then pray to the gods and beseech the Buddhas for things they themselves are not equal to. This is what men of little caliber always do. Now, I was reading this and I thought to myself, who are the modern rats and who are the modern cats? The thugs and the police. The thugs go out and they scream against the police. Because why? Why would you want police? Don't you know that they intrude on your life? Don't you know that they stop you from speeding? Don't you know that the police are an impediment? Don't you know that the police can be racist and overbearing? Don't you know? And the rat prays for the demise of all cats. But it's the toad who reminds the rat. He says, you pray for the cat's demise, but you don't realize that the people keep the cats around because they abhor you. Why do the people of the world, why do the people of the United States, why do they keep the police around? When I was a police officer... I was a bodyguard. I've done a lot of things where I had to carry a gun for a living. And you know what? It would be a wonderful world if we didn't need police officers. It would be a wonderful world if we didn't need bodyguards, if professional security personnel were not required, 
It'd be a wonderful world if we didn't need United States Marines or soldiers. We didn't need an army. If the world were such that we didn't need those, could we live without cats? Probably if we had no rats. If we were able to eradicate all of the rats and vermin off of planet Earth, then what need for cats would we have? But you see here in the United States, we have, we have a thug element. We have a rat element. And the police, or the cats, they get in, in the way of their behavior. They get in the way of what they want to do. The rat wants to eat anything it wants to eat. It wants to go anywhere it wants to go. It wants to take anything that it wants to take. And it doesn't want any opposition. And there's that nasty cat. And so the thug, the rat, prays for the demise of the cat. They pray for the demise. They rally for the demise of the police. Because the police get in their way. And I, as I read that, Jared, I knew. It's like, wow. <laughs> Every once in a while, you discover something. You realize that, what did Solomon say? There is nothing new under the sun. What has been will be again. I hope you appreciated that. I hope you appreciated the little parable there, a little tale from the demon sermon on martial arts. And when you see these Black Lives Matter movements, you see them out there railing against the police, I want you to understand and realize that what they really are is a big bunch of rats. And they don't like the cat because the cat stops them from doing what they want. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with you tomorrow. Thank you for joining us today on Student of the Gun Radio. Jared, go ahead and give them their homework assignment. Those of you that have watched us on Apple TV, do me a favor. Go to the App Store and leave us a review. You can do that. You go to the app on the App Store, you scroll down a little bit, and there are stars that you can click on, and you can give us a five-star rating. There you go. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you tomorrow.